Hello, Sharala, and welcome Hi. to Data Science Conference. Thank you. Can you introduce yourself and tell us just a little bit about yourself before we start? Okay. So, um, my name is Sharala Agzri. So, I come from Malaysia, and the Agzri is, is because I, I'm married to a Swede, and I lived in Sweden oh. for 10 years, <laughs> 10, 13 years. Um, so, I'm an engineer by profession, and I became an entrepreneur about 10 years ago. And I got stumbled into uh, data science somewhere in 2013. And one of the challenges that I had in my business is getting talents uh, to, to produce data science solutions for telecommunication industry. So I came to a point that I said, like, if I can't get them, I'll build them. <laughs> so Center of Applied Data Science was created based on that. Uh, need, very selfish need. It's always about me, myself and I. And now I'm the CEO of ADAX, which is part of the Goman initiative to create uh, Malaysia as a hub for data analytics in the ASEAN region. So just in a nutshell. Okay, so, sounds very good. Like a lot. I'm doing a lot. <laughs> what advice do you have for people who want to become data scientists? So first of all, I'm pretty excited to hear that people want to become data scientists because coming from a culture, from an Asian culture, and I and my, just finished a speech with the team, and I hear it's the same that, you know, you know, if you look at Pichai and you look at Satya and people from India, you are told to, your parents tell you to take an education that you'll be guaranteed a job. And that will be a lawyer, doctor, engineer, teacher, fireman if you're in the US, right? Yeah. <laughs> so how many of you have been told to become a data scientist, right? And, and one of my biggest challenges in the early years is to create awareness that why do you want to become a data scientist? What is it? Is that jobs? Parents would go like, what are you taking? Like, you know, is it like an artist that you're not going to get paid? <laughs> right? You've got to be tied. You've got to die to get famous. So it's, it's really interesting that the awareness of what data science is all about. Uh, you know, universities are offering more and more data science course, but are they takers, right? Um, so, so, yes, it's really important to get into a data science, but I think I, I, I want to address this in various angles, right? Universities now around the world very much concentrate in information science to, to embrace data science, right? It has to be an IT background, Bachelor of Science, but what we look more and more, it is across the board. You know, you, you need data scientists in finance, you need data scientists in economics, you need data scientists in, in medicine. And, and most of these jobs will not be there in 30 to 50 years to come. So it should not be a faculty, it should be a, 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 a ba analytics should be a basic course in all faculties. And I think that's where you're gonna create different domains because data science is applicable from oil and gas to teaching, to healthcare, to economics, yeah? So, so that's one of the first things I think universities should start moving to. Um, as an education system, in my country, and I heard here too, that people would stream, your stream into science stream, and your stream into art stream, and, and that happens in my country, so I think there's a lot of similarities. Not in Sweden, obviously, but in this part of the world. So I am now advocating um, Ministry of Education to stop streaming because data science is where art meets science. It's Michelangelo, it's Da Vinci, right? How do you take a raw data and tell a beautiful story, right? So, so that's part of the educators that I try uh, to, to influence. Now from the family and parents point of view, and I take this very personally because I've got an eight-year-old, that the World Economic Forum said five out of ten jobs in the future has, has not been created. So how do you prepare your child for a job that doesn't exist? What do I tell my eight-year-old? What do you want to be when you grow up? I, I think I'll freak out if she says you're going to be a teacher. And I go like, oh, I'm not sure you're going to have a job, right? <laughs> so, so this is important that to teach um, our, our younger generation the skill of learnability. Get your basics right and anything that's thrown to you, you should have the skill to be able to learn, right? Because I'm a doctor, I don't learn programming. No, it doesn't work anymore. So yeah, so I will come. Back. I, will, I will address that in the three different angles. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much. What do you see as the main or the biggest trends in uh, in data science today, and that are like uh, projected to be the trends in the future? For example, ten years. So the 
CEO of, I think, eBay said, if a company doesn't have an AI strategy, the company is not going to survive. And I think the biggest trend and that's happening, uh, that's happening already is AI automation and people losing their jobs, right? And, and that's real. Um, and I used to debate, oh yeah, but we went through industrialization and we survived. Why won't we survive this? And the, 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 the speed that this is happening, right? And, and the trend that um, we should embrace modernization, we should embrace technology and we should embrace AI to take over mundane jobs, right? You are smart people. The more and more smart people the world produces, they do not want to sit down and do mundane stuff. So then jobs will be created in many ways that I think I can't even talk about it now. But I'll give an example that Amazon has come out with something called Mechanical Turk, which allows you to go and swipe your card to give tasks to people to do just jobs, like labeling of bottles in color, things that my engineers wouldn't want to go, my data scientists wouldn't, uh, probably a job a 14-year-old could do, right? And you could earn for a five-minute job a dollar, right? So job is, here I'm sitting down talking about people losing jobs, shocks me that more and more jobs are created in ways that we wouldn't even imagine. You know, you, you might not be going out and throwing newspapers anymore because it's all digital, but kids can do jobs from their PC. So one of my predictions in the future is going to be that just like learning to swim and learning to play piano, education will be important to have, but it's not to get a job. Right, you, you go to university now to get a job. In the future, it will be an enhancement for a human being. You go and learn music, not to become a great pianist. You learn swimming, not to get into competition. But these are all parents think that's important for a kid to have. And I think this is where education is going to move. And this is what data science is going to change. It's going to disrupt anything that we know. What I'm saying now might not be even exist next year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's some fast change. Right, right, right. <laughs> So for the end, how do you see the link between data science and education? Or how do you see the role of both of these things in each other? Okay, so I went to, I went to U.S. To, to look at, you know, all started there. Data science started in U.S., thanks to Google, thanks to Facebook, um, to look at what makes um, the talent there more prominent to come up with greater ideas like the Ubers um, to bring it back to Asia, right? And one of the key things that missed there was the education system that, that you know, uh, we, I realized that uh, we lacked in my country. So um, I always say that culture and my education became the, the greatest setback for us because you don't question, right? So, so culturally we don't question, you follow, you do. Education is all about mugging, right? You're given a textbook, you study eight hours, 10 hours, you sit for the exam. That has to change right critical thinking questioning to find answers uh, has become very crucial in the world that innovation you don't innovate if you don't create um, uh, there's no problem and then you don't create uh, questions for business problems so i think education uh, is uh, has to change towards that coding has been introduced even in my part of the world in schools in a very young age programming coding to get people to think in flow i think but one of the greatest quote I love, uh, in, I'm a big fan of World Economic Forum because they say, don't teach your kid to program, teach your kid to dream, right? And I think um, Scandinavia has played an important role that, you know, when you play, you invent, you create. And we have become this culture that study and results and, you know, everything is back to that degree to guarantee you a job. And I don't think so that's going to be the case in the future. Okay, so I have uh, one more question from oh, everything yes. that you said. Yes. Um, so you have lived in Sweden, and how do you see, you said that it's different from here or from Asia, and yeah. how do you see that it's different? Um, the Swedes, um, it's all about learn while you play. Uh, the Swedes have one of the greatest economy in innovation and gaming, um, and, and they've been successful because it's all not um, results, uh, test score orientated, right? Their whole education system is, is uh, learning as you, as you go and producing and thinking. And I think uh, that freedom to do that, I think coming from a developing country, that freedom to do that, like you, you worry, right? You come out, you might not have a job. Uh, you don't do things for passion anymore. Yeah. 
right? Because that's the need um, in the past. Because because my parents come from the World War Two, and 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 we're developing, right? So it's 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 a fight on who gets the job. Uh, and in Sweden, that they've created this uh, Scandinavia. Basically, you've you've heard about the Finland education system. You know, there's no homework. Uh, my kids, like when I came back to Asia. They were three years old and the teacher gave homework and my, my husband took them out from that school, right? It's like, no, they should come back and play, right? So, so that, I think, allows them to dream, allows them to create. So when you have time to play, when you have time not just doing homework, you, you, you invent games. Remember when we were younger, when we didn't have computer, we were out in the streets playing with friends, creating games, right? out of rocks, out of trees. Uh, so I think Sweden keeps that very close to their core when it comes to education. And then they have an education system that you might miss out when you're in high school, but they have an adult learning education system that allows you to go back to school again. Uh, in my country, you miss the boat. <laughs> it's very difficult to get back into the system, right? And, and I realize Sweden has that. Like they, they kind of accept that you could be 18 and not have an ambition. And you might not graduate, but you can come back in two to three years and have an adult learning program and still be successful. And I thought, I found that fascinating. Because we are like, you got one, one choice and you miss it. You, yeah. you, you are stuck in what job you get, right? So I, I think that's the advantage, I think. Yeah, surely it's like that in Serbia and probably in Asia. It's not the food and the partying. I realize we have a lot in common, so I like this. <laughs> <laughs> so would you like to add something? Um, I, I think um, I think this conference um, it, it fascinates me. Uh, when Alexander um, invited me, my first thing was like, "What am I going to do in Belgrade?" Like you know, and and I think it's I think you under promote yourself. This is a fascinating program. I'm shocked at the turnout. Right, you could do better colors. <laughs> it's winter. <laughs> you might you might make it better colors. Data scientists don't have to be boring. Uh, but it uh, it amazes me that, that that the amount of effort that you know it's almost like a volunteer program you guys are doing, and uh, this is gets me excited to try something out like this. Maybe have you guys do something in Asia? I don't know, but <laughs> this got me like there's hope. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Thank you for the interview and enjoy the conference. Thank you so much. I now need to go and give support to other yeah. professors. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.